All right, people, it's time for another one of my uh, famous tier lists. It's like my specialty. You know, there's like you go over to like your grandma's house and she has a specialty like, OK, boys, who's ready for some of grandma's famous blueberry strudel or whatever? You know, your grandma has her specialty. That's me. My specialty is tier lists. That's what the people say. They tell me they love my tier lists. I wish I could do a better Donald Trump impression because that's what he would say. Many people are telling me my tier lists are great. That's what they say. I don't know if they're right. They probably are, but that's what the people are saying. They say my tier lists are the best content, really just the greatest content. That's what everyone tells me. Anyway, today we shall return for the second installment of the side projects and super groups tier list because it's one of these weird things that uh, I feel like Side projects are almost always bad, even when the people in them are very talented for some reason. I don't know. For some reason, as soon as they go off and do their own thing and start experimenting, usually bad. But we shall find out. We'll go down the list of some of the uh, most important and popular side projects in rock and metal. And we will ask, were they great or were they yet another terrible rock and metal side project we shall see breaking news i have new merch i've got this new one designed by my good friend michael shantz it says hell yeah brother hell yeah brother and the listen to new metal shirt as well as all my other designs and you can check all of those out at the link in the description of this video so the first one to talk about here is boxcar racer do you guys remember boxcar racer I'm not making it up. This literally what happened is uh, Tom DeLong heard Quicksand and Fugazi and he said, I want to start a post hardcore side project when Blink-182 had some downtime. So he got Dave Kennedy from Over My Dead Body to play guitar. And uh, then Travis Barker ended up playing drums because let's let's be real. If you're in a band with Travis Barker, you're not going to find a better drummer. So if you have a side project, you're like, hey, Travis, will you play drums for my side project too? Why not? And they basically did Quicksand only better. And I think Quicksand is great. But uh, I would say of this sort of like moody post hardcore kind of sound, um, I, I kind of think Boxcar is the best to ever do it because it's like you know that like dark moodiness of quicksand but with the poppiness of blink and uh gotta say i think it's pretty fucking great so in my opinion i was not expecting much from this because you know the track record for side projects as i've said is not great but this one was a pleasant surprise i think it still holds up and as far as side projects go I'm going to put it on the S tier. I would say that this is actually better than most of Blink's albums. It's better than probably the last 15 years of Blink, in my opinion. I think it's great. Awesome band. They only did that one album. Yeah, I did like them back in the day. I did. I liked it a lot. Great album, great band, and uh, very underrated. If you haven't listened to Boxcar Eraser, you should. Don't miss out. They're great. How about Stone Sour? For those who don't know... Stone Sour, it's not, I mean, we think of it as a Slipknot side project, but technically it's not. This is the band that Corey Taylor was in before he was in uh, Slipknot. This is their 94 demo. It's much more like Creed. <laughs> I'm not joking. It sounds like Christian rock. Yes. You can hear the demo. And my question is, what did the members of Slipknot hear in this that made them think, oh yeah, Corey Taylor, the guy from this band, that's the guy that we need to join Slipknot. He's going to make us famous. It's just stunningly bad. Stunningly bad. Sounds like a high school battle of the bands, doesn't it? Like ninth graders with like crate combo amps in like the high school gym. <laughs> Yeah, local bar on a Monday, exactly. Now, I will say, so people think of Stone Sour as a Slipknot side project because they got back together years later. Him and Jim Root were in this band. They got back together. And uh, I actually love this song, probably because it basically sounds like Slipknot. I love this riff. But it basically just sounds like a Slipknot song very like redneck this is a hell yeah brother riff exactly very hell yeah brother 
very much Army Wife Corps. Very much. This is uh, fellows in the military. Well, you're deployed over in Afghanistan, living in a fucking shipping container. This is what your wife is listening to back home when she cheats on you with the neighbor. <laughs> I'm a little bit split on this one because the uh, early Stone Sour stuff is uh, clearly just absolutely dreadful. Like, beyond bad. It's like just putrid the later stuff pretty good so i'm gonna split it down the middle and i'll put it on the b tier halfway between f and s why not could be worse next up we have drugs for those who don't know drugs is uh craig owens from chiodos nick martin from this version was nick martin from sleeping sirens i forget who else was in drugs i'm a certified craig owens disliker so as much as i hate to admit it this is not bad this is actually pretty good as much as i don't like craig owens i don't want to give craig owens credit for anything but it's pretty damn good like this chorus it's damn good it's pretty good now, the reason why is because John Feldman, I think, probably wrote a lot of this stuff. Uh, never asked, but uh, Feldman did produce the album. Their album after this, not nearly as good. Gotta say that Feldman probably deserves a lot of the credit for that one. Either way, as much as I'm not an appreciator of Craig Owens, um, gotta give credit where it's due. I think this album's pretty damn good. The other one, not so much, but that album? Pretty damn good. I'm going to put it on the A tier. What's next? Oh, this is an interesting one. Them Crooked Vultures. And this is Dave Grohl and Josh from Queens of the Stone Age and John Paul Jones from uh, Led Zeppelin. So one of these super group type things. I know this is going to be sacrilege. Um, I'm not a huge fan of any of these bands. I think they're all fine, but I'm not a huge fan of any of them. Um really bad name too all i'm saying is if i played this for you and i didn't tell you who it was you'd probably think this was a local bar band right sounds like every person is playing a different song definitely car commercial music or hot dog rock yes not the worst thing i've ever heard Oh, Hot Dog Rock. Okay, for anybody who doesn't know what Hot Dog Rock is, Hot Dog Rock, very simple. Um, it's the kind of music like this where if you just listen to the song on its own, you're like, eh, doesn't do much for me. But if you think about it, imagine it was like late August and you're at the county fair and this band was playing while you were in line to get a hot dog. You'd be like, you know what? This is pretty good. I'm feeling it. You know, everyone's there with their kids. You're going to get a delicious, like, $12 hot dog. You know, maybe you had a, an $18 beer. Um, you know, it's a beautiful summer day. In that context, you might think this is pretty good. So that's, that's what I mean by hot dog rock. So where would I rank this? I think this is another good example of a super group that's uh, maybe not actually super. I would put this on the C tier. It's, it's not great. Like, I would rather listen to Stone Sour than them crooked vultures for me personally i don't know how about uh a perfect circle one of uh maynard james keenan's many side projects although actually i mean it's not really it's not really his side project although he gets credit for it it's actually started by this guy named billy howardell who was a guitar tech for tool who wrote these songs like back in the late 80s or something like that and uh, decided he wanted to like put out an album and uh, Maynard agreed to sing on it. I think, yeah, I, I agree with this. Probably the most listenable project with Maynard on it. Um, I actually agree with that. Also has Josh Freese on drums from the Vandals and Devo and Guns N' Roses and a, a million other things. One of the best rock drummers ever. I gotta say, I think it's pretty damn good. I think they're better than Tool. I'm debating between A and S. You know what? I'm going to be fair. I'm going to put it on the S tier because I, th I think, it. you know, I'm not that much of a butt rock guy. And I would say this band is butt rock, but I'd say pretty damn good. Yeah, Judith is a great song. As far as side projects go, I think it's fair to put it up there with Boxcar Racer. Yeah, it's like a less pretentious tool. Now, on the other hand, another one of Maynard's side projects is uh, Pucifer. I don't know what that reference is all about. I don't want to know because... 
Everything that Maynard does seems to involve like dick or butthole references. I don't know. Lucifer, not not good. Not good at all. Like rough is a good way to put it. Very rough. It's not good. This is like the kind of music that I would expect from someone who like the person who wrote Johnny Guitar in Fallout New Vegas put out like a solo album and this would be their music. You'd be like, oh, the guy from Johnny Guitar made an album. I'll check it out. And you're like, oh, uh, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> and to make matters worse, Maynard prides this band himself as his most expressive form. Well, that tells you a lot about where Maynard is coming from. Uh, bad. It's bad. Really, really bad. Um, and so like edgy and try hard, just everything about Pucifer is bad. I mean, just the name alone, it's the most like local band name. It's terrible. I would rather listen to them crooked vultures all day long than Pucifer. So I'm going to put it on the F tier. Um, yeah, I mean the logo, exactly. It tells you everything you need to know. Next we have Prophets of Rage. Uh-oh. The following content has been identified by the YouTube community as inappropriate or offensive to some audiences. Watch out, everyone. Prophets of Rage are edgy. They don't give a frick what you think. So for those who don't know, this is basically Rage Against the Machine without Zach. With Chuck D from Public Enemy and uh, one of the guys from Cypress Hill on vocals, right? Frick them all to heck. Does anyone else think America is bad? Does anyone else think the government is bad? Thank God that Tom Morello had the nerve to say that Trump is bad. Tom Morello single-handedly saving the world by saying religion is bad, the government is bad, Trump is bad. Did you know that, people? The damn, the damn orange man. It's shockingly bad. Shockingly awful. Yeah, I just think this is so cringe. For whatever reason, Rage Against the Machine was able to say a lot of the same things, but it wasn't cringe. Rage Against the Machine's music sounded great. Their lyrics felt sincere. Even though they said a lot of the same kind of stuff, it just, it, it, it felt like, it felt great. Like, Rage Against the Machine is like pretty much universally respected, but without Zach, it just sounds like, the most awful, like, cringy butt rock, doesn't it? Yeah, Zach made Rage good. That's what it is. I mean, this is terrible. Ugh, it's so bad. Like, just shocking. Because it's it's literally Rage Against the Machine, but with different rappers. And, uh, oh, look at that, people. Finally, someone had the guts to say it. Social media is bad. Even Yahoo? Really, Tom? Really, even Yahoo's bad and Kick and Vine. Um, by the way, this came out. Um, oh God, Michael Moore directed it. Jesus, this came out in 2017, and they have Vine in here. Oh, thank God, Michael Moore and Tom Morello are sticking it to Vine and Yahoo. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think um, Prophets of Rage to me is just trash one of the worst side projects ever i mean look at this it's just they're knocking themselves off you know like it just tells you that they basically have one idea prophets of rage absolutely awful Lucifer is bad but it's not offensive. Prophets of Rage is fucking offensively awful. I would rather listen to Pucifer. Now, you know, we couldn't talk about side projects without talking about the ultimate side project, the GOAT side project, Methods of Mayhem, AKA Tommy Lee from Motley Crue's new metal side project. You know, I had to talk about this. You know what I'm gonna talk about here. The best, the best lyrics of all time. You people think Eminem is the rap god. You people think Kendrick is the king of lyrics these days. Oh, that's because you have never heard Tommy Lee drop these bars. You're about to get schooled, people, on lyrics. Shooting my jizzy jism. The best line. Imagine this. Imagine a guy sitting around naked in a hotel room. Imagine you're working on this video 
And this man has to do this line like 10 times over. Okay, Tommy, can we get the uh, shooting my jizzy jism line? Can we just get that one more time? Shooting my jizzy jism. And he even got Fred Durst in the video. But here's the thing. It's true. This is B tier. It's not good, but it's good at not being good. That's that's right. It's actually not as bad as you might think. I'm not going to go ahead and say that this is like the best thing ever made or anything like that. But, you know, in all honesty, it's not the worst. It's pretty catchy. I'll put it on the B tier. I think that's fair. I would certainly rather listen to Methods of Mayhem. Not ironically, I'd rather listen to Methods of Mayhem than Pucifer or them crooked vultures and certainly more than prophets of rage it's better than you might think better than people give it credit for an interesting band that you don't hear people talk about too often is uh, murder dolls which was joey from slipknot's side project he played guitar and drums in this with a guy named wednesday 13 on vocals also from the band at wednesday 13 kind of like a a horror punk kind of band medley horror punk I think they're kind of underrated. A lot of uh, colored dreads in one place. Why do bands like this always have a Nazi captain hat? Well, apparently the guitarist was also um, interested in um, underage um, people. So I suppose having a Nazi hat um, kind of goes, uh, goes along with that, doesn't it? <laughs> I actually think this band is good in kind of a shitty way. I like how low budget it is. I think it's good. It's catchy. It is garbage. It's true. It's garbage, but in the same way as like, you know how you have like that one local band that you kind of liked? Man, that local band that was, that's was that been around for like 18 years and they've never played... To more than like 75 people and they're like legitimately awful but i kind of like them that's murder dolls except because joey jordison was in the band they actually got signed and played big shows and stuff but basically murder dolls is like the popular version of like a crappy local band that you kind of like you know what i mean yeah the rawness of it is cool like it's objectively bad, but uh, I don't know. I th I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Am I going to say that it's the best thing of all time? No, I'm not. I'm not by any means. But, uh, you know, I don't think it's I don't think it's bad. A solid B tier. That's where I would put it. Right up there with Methods of Mayhem. Solid B. And there's nothing wrong with a B. Remember, people. A B, you know, that's 80%. Probably half of you people have a GED. You'd be thrilled to get a B. Thrilled. Another one, which I, I know you people are not going to like this. Everybody thinks Wes Borland is like God's gift to music. I do think that Wes Borland is a talented guy. But, uh, you know, I think there's a tendency to say that the only reason Limp Bizkit was popular is because of Wes Borland's musical genius. And he was the real brains behind Limp Bizkit. Well, Big Dumb Face is his side project where he was basically able to do whatever he wanted without someone like Fred Durst to kind of guide him and, you know, keep him in check. So if you wanted to know what Wes Borland does when he has complete creative control, well, here it is. Here it is, people. This is pure Wes Borland right here. So he likes Primus. Feel like European. The Europeans probably. I could imagine this band headlining a festival in Spain or Belgium. All the West Borland stands seething right now, just drinking gallons of copium. It's not serious music. They're joking around, so that doesn't make it bad. Listen, West Borland seems like a lovely guy. He's a talented dude. Make make some great riffs, but uh, it is what it is, people. I'm just saying, listen, Wes, you can do whatever you want. Here's some money to record an album. Do whatever you want. And this is what he did. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. There it is, people. I don't, I don't make the rules. Don't kill the messenger. Don't get mad at me for pointing out that this exists. I didn't make it. I'm just telling you it exists. So clearly it's bad. And obviously it's also bad on purpose. Obviously. We know he's, he's just uh, horsing around. 
but I gotta say, I think I would rather listen to that than Prophets of Rage or Pucifer. I, I do. And I, I'm gonna give it some points for just not giving a fuck. So I'm gonna put it on the C tier only because it feels disrespectful to put it on the same tier as Prophets of Rage and Pucifer. So I'm gonna put it on the C tier. I think that's a fair score. And the last one is Killer Be Killed, which is Greg from Dillinger, Max from Sepultura, and I don't actually remember who else is in this band. Oh, Troy from Mastodon, and uh, Dave from the Mars Volta on drums. Okay, so another one of these super groups. I was a little bit psyched out by this one because, I don't know, I mean, these guys were all in, like, you know, some pretty heavy bands. Like, Sepultura arguably, like, invented, like, black metal, you know, on their like early shit. Dillinger, one of the most unhinged bands of all time. I was expecting something pretty crazy. And uh, it's not, it's kind of dad rock, you know? Not bad. It's kind of hot dog rock, isn't it? It didn't land for me. Respect to everyone in the band. Do you guys know? I am the world's number one fan of uh, Max era Sepultura. I am close to the world's number one fan of early Dillinger Escape Plan. Respect and also, most of all, look at this. Respect to uh, Max's like size 45 camo cargo pants there. Um, very, very dedicated to the new metal drip. But uh, is this good? You know, I'd say uh, it's not bad. I felt like it should have been better if that makes sense. You know what I mean? I was whelmed. I was neither overwhelmed nor underwhelmed. I was just whelmed. I'd put it on the C tier along with uh, them crooked vultures. That's what I would think. So there it is, people. Volume two of the side project tier list. Agree or disagree? Either way, if you made it this far into the video, I say thank you. Join me for a delicious hot dog next time them crooked vultures ever play a show. Perfect hot dog music.